Cool. Good morning, CCB. Uh, before I read, I want to share a quick story with you guys uh, about when it was about this tall. I used to uh, go to bed every night and pray to God. Same prayer over and over. Um, when I was around six or seven years old, I would say, God, please just spare me from going to hell. And I was terrified. I was terrified of going to hell. And at that, at that time, I would barely get any sleep at all because of how afraid I was. And so one night, I was, it was really late. I was not able to sleep. So I finally decided that I was going to go down and tell my dad that I was terrified and I couldn't sleep. So I walked downstairs and I found my dad in the basement. He was working. Um, he's a dental laboratorian, so he was making some teeth. And uh, I said, Dad, I'm terrified of going down. And he looked at me, stopped what he was doing, and he said, If you don't believe, then you should. And then I said, I believe. And then he said, If you believe that Jesus died for your sins, then you believe that there's nothing to be afraid of. And at that point, I realized that there's a confidence in the hope that we have. We don't have faith without confidence. We don't have hope without confidence. We know that what we hope for is going to happen. Christ is coming back. He's coming back to save us. So today I'm going to read uh, Hebrews 10. Starting in verse 19. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging, encouraging one another daily, and all the more, as you see the day drawing near. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this time that you bless us with to come gather in fellowship to worship you and to hear from your word lord i pray that you would just soften our hearts and let us be attentive and listening to what you have to say to us and, uh, please let each and every one of us pour our hearts out fully to you as we worship and pray these things in jesus name.
Introduction of speaker. Thank Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I want to introduce uh, someone very special to me. We've been married for a long time. Don't ask me how many years. I might get in trouble. But uh, her name is Sparkle Raymond. She's my wife. And who's best to introduce her but me? That's right. So um, she is a woman of God. And she has a word for us today, this morning. I believe it's going to warm your heart. At this time, give a warm welcome to Reverend Dr. Sparkle Raymond. I have a big mouth, so I really don't need the mic. But <laughs> for the sake of being obedient, I'm going to leave it right there. It is good to see you all once again. And I just want to tell this young man that came up here and told his story. I don't know who he is. One, I don't have my glasses on, and two, the light's in my eye. So I saw all a part of it, but it, it touched me so that I'm still trembling. That, um, that you had that testimony. Uh, kind of ties into what my sermon is about. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still touched. I'm still emotional about it, but I'm going to get through it. Yeah. The title of my sermon is Freed from Sin. And so when you know God, you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to worry about hell because we know that there is a place for us as believers. I'm just touched by his message. So I'm gonna try to get through this. I'm not a long-winded speaker. I'm a talker, but I'm not a long-winded speaker. I'm gonna be coming out of the book of Romans, chapter six, verses five through 10. And if you are able, would you be so kind as to stand for the reading and the hearing of God's word? Romans 6, chapter 6, verses 5 through 10. And it reads as follows. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him and that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth, we shall now not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, 
we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Amen. 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 You may be seated. He died. We just found out Sunday. They call it Resurrection Day. Resurrection Sunday. That means he rose from the dead. And that's good news. I mean, that is just, that's just good news to know that death does not have dominion over us. And so we don't need to fear it because it does not have power over God's people. We as believers don't need to fear death. We don't need to be afraid because we know who we serve. So I'm just going to break these five verses down as best that I can. First thing, we need to know the difference between the believer's position and his practice. The difference. His position is his standing in Christ. That's his position. His practice is what he does or she in your everyday living. So you need to know your position and you also need to be careful of how you practice it. Grace puts us into the position that teaches us to work worthy of the calling that has been placed upon each of us. Now, whether we accept it or not, that is totally an individual choice. You get to choose whether you will serve him or not. That is your choice. I can't make it for you. Your mama can't make it for you. Your friends can't make it for you. It is a choice that comes directly from you. You decide who you will serve. Joshua said, this day, you decide. But as for me and my family, yes. we will serve the Lord. That's the attitude you have, young man. That's the attitude you have. You're going to serve the Lord. Hmm. Our position is absolutely perfect because we are in Christ. And our practice should be increasing each day. What do I mean that our practice should be increasing each day? That means each day you should be growing more Christ-like. Everything that you do, everything that comes out of your mouth, every thought that goes through your head should be more Christ-like. Don't look at all the evil and the wrong that's taking place around you. Know who you belong to. Walk that path that's worthy of being a believer in Christ Jesus. It's not a hard path. It's a straight and a narrow one. But it's a path that you cannot walk alone. You have to walk that path with him. Believe you me, I'm telling you from an old perspective. You're going to waver. Things are going to come at you. People are going to ask you why you're serving a God that does all of this and does all of that. Why is so much hatred in the world? Why are babies being born with disabilities? They're going to have all those questions because they're going to say that that's not a loving God. But you need to know for yourself that God does not make mistakes. <clears throat> Everything that he has done is good. Yes. Yeah. Everything. Satan is the one that has evil, but he does not have the power. He has never had it, and he never will. So you need to be mindful of who you're serving. Yes. Because of our identification with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are no longer slaves to sin. <clears throat> now, I did not say we will no longer sin. We are no longer slaves to sin. That's a difference. Sin does not have dominion over your life. Sin does not have dominion over you. You're no longer slaves. He took that away from you when he died on the cross. Know that you are in good hands. Rather, in Christ, we have been freed from the slavery of bondage that sin brought us. 
When someone trusts in Jesus for the forgiveness of sins, their old sin nature has been passed away. You are no longer a child of Adam. You are a child of Christ Jesus. Adam sinned. Jesus did not. Whose child do you want to be? Do you want to be Adam's? Or do you want to be Jesus? You have to decide. You have to decide. And the Bible gives you a, a, a visual based on a water baptism. That water baptism realizes that it's just like Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. When you go down in the water, that's the old man, your old sin nature. And when you come up out of the water, you become a new creature. That's why it's important not to be sprinkled, not to be sprinkled, but to emerge yourself. Because what you're doing is you're, you're killing that old man. You're drowning him in the water. And you're coming up a new man. You're coming up a new creature. You're coming up a child of God. That's what it means. So when God died on the cross, when Jesus died on the cross for our sins, that's what he did. He took on all of our sins and he buried them. He did away with them. He paid the price. So you have to ask yourself, was it worth it? Was it for him? It was it worth it for him to go through all that pain and torture for your sin and mine? Was it worth it? Do you believe that it was worth it? Do you believe that somebody could love you so much that they are willing to die for you? That's why when the enemy comes up against you, just be strong. Just remember that somebody loved you enough to die on an old rugged cross. Carry a burden that was not his. Died for a sin or sins that he did not commit. But thought that you were worth it. Remember that when the enemy comes against you, young people. Old people too. <laughs> Remember. You're worth it. He gave his life for you. You are worth it. This is what Paul is trying to get them to understand. You have to understand the value of your worth. Just as we have been unified together with Christ in the likeness of this death, certainly we also shall be unified with him in the likeness of his resurrection. That was my first point. United together with Christ. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Just to think about Christ Jesus. We are united together with Christ. Call heirs to the kingdom of God. If that don't, as a my husband says, that don't light your fire, then your wood must be wet. <laughs> it's a good thing. Since we not only go under the water, we come up out of the water, a likeness of his resurrection. Just as we have been united with Christ in his likeness of his death, the immersion into the water, so are we reunited, united with him in the likeness of his resurrection. When you come up out of the water, we confess in baptism that our old man was crucified with Christ. Mm. That's your second point. You were crucified with Christ. When he was up on that cross, you as believers was crucified with Christ. Our old man refers to all that we were when we were children of Adam. All our old evil and hateful and sinful ways, we crucified all of that. We did away with it. All our old habits and our old appetites, all our old lusts and old desires, we crucified it. We did away with that. As conversion, we put on the old man and put off, we put off the old man and put on the new man as if exchanging our old filthy rags hmm, for some spotless clothing. Colossians 3, 9 and 10 puts it this way. Lie not one to another, seeing that we have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. The image. Do you know who created you? Do you know whose image you were created in? 
Think about that when you go out there into this dying world. But the world may be dying around you, but Christ lives. And if he's in you, you live. He has paid the price. It was a terrible price, but he paid it. Don't you think it's worthy? How many of you think it's worthy? He is worthy to be praised. Yes. yes. Those songs you guys chose was just beautiful. He's worthy yes. to be praised. The crucifixion of the old man at Calvary means that the body of sin has been put out of commission. <laughs> Knocked out of the ball field. The body of sin does not refer to the physical body. It means indwelling sin, which is personal, personified as a tyrant ruling the person. You know, it's, it's, Satan don't want to give up. You know, the moment he thinks that you are going to turn your life around, he is going to come after you. He told Paul, he, he, he told uh, Peter, so Satan has a desire to shift, shift you like wheat. In other words, he wants to shift all of the good out you and just leave the bad. That's, that's Satan's desire. But God has a better desire. He says, Satan, that one belongs to me. You can shift and shake all you want, but that one stays in my hand since no man can pluck him out. Don't you know that once you have committed and given your life to Christ, that no man can pluck you out? You belong to him. He's not going to take you up and then put you back down. He's going to see you through your hard times. He's going to see you through your trials and tribulations. But when they come, don't be overcome by them because he's already told you in this life, you're going to have trials and tribulations. So he's already preparing you for when they come to expect that's not going to be easy. But you can get through it. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Just give me an example of, of somebody on death row. Committed a murder. His sentence was death row. Once he has been electrocuted or shot or whatever, he's free from sin because his penalty has been paid. See, you can't keep killing the same person over and over. Once he's dead, he's dead. So that case is closed. Your case was closed on the cross. Your sins were buried. They were done away with. He paid the full. It said paid in full. I paid the price. Cost me my life. But I thought it was worth it. So I paid it. So your debt has been paid in full. So we need to act like we know that. Our death with Christ is not one-sided. It, it, it's a, it's a two-sided coin. It's not just that you died. That's the only side of that coin. The good news is that you will live again. That's the best time. That's what makes you happy. I don't worry about dying. One part because I'm old and you know, hey, what the heck? It's all good. <laughs> I've been young and I've done that, but now I'm old. <laughs> Glory be to God. <laughs> But you young people, it just it just gives my heart joy to see young folks in here. I remember when I was taking classes here, and I tell Jonathan all the time, he was my toughest instructor. Man, I thought I could get away with it. Thought I knew the Bible. Oh, Dr. Jonathan <laughs> kept me in that word. Kept me in it. But I to this day I thank him. I thank him. I thank you guys for the teachers that you have here that put forth the effort because it is important to teach the word of God. You know, preaching it is good too, but you can't preach what you don't know. So you have to learn it first for it to be applicable to life. So put all you have into it, just like I did. Just put all you have into it. Now I like Jonathan. <laughs> I like you too. <laughs> give it all you got. When you when you when you're on the battlefield, give it all you got. Just just fight. Fight the good fight. 
You know, because I, I say, if I'm just on the good side and it's just me standing there, then I've got an army because I've got God in my back. He's got me. So I don't have to worry about what people are saying or what everybody else is doing. I just need to stand on what I know. I know about a rock. I know about a good foundation. I know that for myself. I had to learn it for myself. I grew up in the church, hated every minute of it. Ain't no need me lying. I kept thinking, when are they gonna shut up? When can I leave? Why don't that old man stop praying so long? I was terrible. That's why I know there's a God, because he had patience with me. <laughs> I know he's real. And so I know that you guys, you're young, and you're going to go through some stuff, but God is real. He's, he's as real as real can be. And you can feel him, because he's, he's indwelling. He said, I'm going to leave you a comforter. And that comforter is your inner man. It's the holy man, that Holy Spirit, that will help you get through your trials and tribulations. Mm. Our death was Christ. It's just a beautiful thing. He died to sin so that we may live to righteousness. Sin's dominion over has been destroyed, has been shattered. That's my third point. We share Christ's resurrected life here and in the ever after. We share that resurrected life. We are the children of Christ. We are good. We are good. Don't let anybody take that from you. Our confidence is based on the fact that the risen Christ will never die again. Never. He only had to be that sacrifice once. And he will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Death did not have dominion over him for three days, but, but for only three days and three nights. But that dominion is forever past. It's gone. Christ can never die again. Never. 1 Corinthians 15, 55 through 57 says, O death, where is their sting? O grave, where is their victory? Mm. The sting of death is sin. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have the victory. You need to walk in victory. There's no reason for you not to be happy when you wake up in the morning. Yeah, some days is rough. Some days is not. <laughs> Just remember the good days, because the bad days will come. When, we, when the Lord Jesus died, he died to the whole subject of sin once and for all. He died to sin's claims, its wages, its demands, and its penalty. He finished the work and settled the account so perfectly that it never needs to be replaced or repeated. Now that he lives, he lives to God. In one sense, he's always lived to God, but this is the other sense that we're talking about. But now he lives to God in a new relationship as the risen Christ, where he can never, ever enter into a bad atmosphere with his sin. Right now, you look at the news, you look at what's going on around you, and it's just filled with sin. Just ruthless and reckless shooting. Just folks can't wait at a stoplight for an extra second. People cursing each other out for no reason. But there is a place. There is a place. It's nothing but joy, joy, joy. Peace, love, and happiness. Just hold on and you will get there. And in closing, I want to leave three things with you. Let us remember our freedom from sin is threefold. First, in Christ, believers have been freed from the penalty of sin for Jesus took our penalty, a penalty upon him when he died for us. Second, we are being freed daily from the power of sin. Daily, you are being freed. Sin does not have rule over you anymore. And third, we live in the great hope, the great hope, young man, hmm, that one day we will be freed from the very presence of sin in eternity with Jesus. God's word.
for God's people. Thank you all. word that segue real nicely to our invitation today that if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior you need to give your life to him today don't worry about who's looking at you just come and say, Lord, I want to be part of your family, the family of Christ. He's done so much for us. We should be willing to come and give our life to him. Because there's one thing that's for certain. The next second is not promised to us. The next minute is not promised to us. <clears throat> the next hour is not promised to us. And tomorrow is not promised to us. The only promise we have is in Him. Eternal life. Is there one this morning? Is there one? Let the church say amen. 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 amen.
announcements this week. First of all, I would like to invite you to join us for lunch. We have pizza and salad coming, so please join us for lunch today, right after chapel. Second thing is fall schedules are out. GFM scholars, I was able to give you your schedules for next year, uh, for the next school year that is. So fall schedules are out, and I want to encourage you, if you haven't signed up for classes, please do that. I sent out an email because we have some really great class options. So some of them are Be Grounded in the Word, an Old Testament survey with Professor Barnett. Be Encouraged with Tools for Life in Biblical Counseling with Professor Lim. She's also teaching Greek too. So that's something that uh, you can put on your agenda that's uh, a powerful tool uh, for Bible study. Be empowered with understanding and major prophets with Professor Knowles. He's right across from my office. He is a powerful uh, teacher. You'll learn a lot in that class. Be enriched in your abilities with hermeneutics with Professor Raymond. Be knowledgeable in digital ministry with Professor Tate. Be challenged to discern in systematic theology with Professor, Professor Flickinger. And if you're in his Sermon on the Mount class right now, like me and some other people are. That is a rip-roaring class. It's great debate. <laughs> You'll be challenged. I've been challenged to um, uh, abandon my sloppy theology. He, he holds us accountable. Uh, and then, you know, the book of Acts. That can be a confusing book for some. It's a transitional book. Well, Professor Van Buskirk is tackling the book of Acts. So I want to encourage you. Those are just a sampling of some of our exciting fall classes. I encourage you to register. Uh, you can see me or you can see Audrey Richardson to register. Okay, next announcement. Impact Week for ministry is the last week of April. So it's coming up the week after next. And I want to encourage you to get your ministry points for ministry formation. So some of the things that we're going to be doing the last part of April that we can I can report on your student records there that you're doing that ministry formation because we don't just learn about the Christian life and learn about Christian principles we put the, our faith into practice Saturday April 30th um, let's see in the morning there is the serve food pantry where we'd be stocking uh, shelves for the food pantry uh, also on Saturday April 30th starting at 8 a.m. Hope House has a building project that is building a bike structure, that's an option for you. Also at the Thurman Brisbane uh, Center, there's a meal that can be served on Wednesday, April 27th, starting at 4.30. And also there's landscaping that needs to be done at the Thurman Brisbane Center, uh, April 30th, Saturday, eight to 12. And uh, there's also another project at Hope House on Saturday in the morning, sorting clothes and doing things around at Hope House. If you're interested in doing any of these ministry formations and ministering to the community, please see me, I'll sign us up, and um, I'll get you on the schedule. My last announcement is, it's my pleasure to introduce to you once again our uh, uh, board chairman for CCV, Dick Barnett, because he has something to share with us about our very last chapel that's coming up in a couple weeks, and he's gonna give us some just hints about what we can expect. So, Dr. Barnett. So, two years ago, fall, our first class of the Gary Foss Memorial Scholarship students arrived on the scene. Woo! And you were also, <laughs> yes, let's hear it. <laughs> you were also some of the youngest students that ever had arrived on the scene here, ever. And it was so exciting and I remember like yesterday of course I remember lots of stuff like yesterday but I remember like yesterday that first class that I shared with you and here were all these tables filled with these wonderful young people and it was so scary because here I am this old geezer and I'm trying to teach a bunch of young people and I thought how is this gonna go and bless your heart, you were kind to me, <laughs> and I appreciate that. Well, come May 14th, right? The 14th? Yes. Saturday, May 14th. You're going to be graduating, uh, most of you, with a degree from Lancaster, 
Bible College and a degree from Cornerstone College of Virginia. There were 12 of you that started uh, two years ago and 10 survivors. <laughs> How about that? Uh -huh. Who are graduating. And of those, I believe there's eight that are continuing on in our simultaneous enrollment option program. And we're excited about that. So Saturday, May 14th, unfortunately for me, is my granddaughter's graduation from Virginia Tech. And my family has explained to me that I'm gonna be there. <laughs> so I'm sorry. However, staff has been kind to me. They said, hey, we can have a uh, May the 3rd, Tuesday, May the 3rd chapel, just like we're having now. And you'll have an opportunity to uh, talk to each of the young people that are graduating that will be here for that chapel. And CCV has a gift for you, and we have a certificate, I understand, suitable for framing. And I'll get all dressed up in what I would have worn if I was there on Saturday the 14th. And I look forward to having an opportunity to speak to you as a group and then speak to you individually with certain secret things I know about you <laughs> that I'll share with everybody and uh, have a brief message. And then afterwards, we're gonna have a celebratory uh, little luncheon. And uh, so those of you that can attend and those of you that can be here to support them, I look forward to that uh, special day. So God bless you. Thank you. Awesome, exciting announcements. Um, just wanted to acknowledge our guest speaker and that excellent sermon. Um, yeah. that we will uh, hopefully take it to heart and that it will bear fruit in all of our lives. And then ask if there were any final remarks from Dr. Henry. Okay. Um, and then also um, from Dr. Raymond. She will close us out. Okay. Prayer, uh, benediction, and blessing of the food. She'll do that. That sounds good. Well, I'll hand it off to you then. Well, the benediction has already been done. And we open up the door of the church. So I will just pray us out and ask for blessings over the food. Yes, sir. Let us bow our head. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this day. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, the sacrifice you made on our behalf. Lord, each day, grow us to be more like you. Each day, let the light that's supposed to be in, in us shine through a dark world. Each day, teach us the ways that we should go. Teach us the things that we need to know. And the things that we don't understand, Lord, teach us to ask you for your guidance. Let us not lean to our own understanding. Let us always acknowledge you and let you direct our paths. And we're asking for special blessings over the food that has been prepared for the nourishment of our bodies, where we be glorified and give all praises, honor that's due to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. These are the days
God like Jehovah. There's no 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 God like Jehovah.